uh, I'm going to continue from lesson number 59 and uh, in this lesson um, we are going to look at perfect market now if you remember in the previous lesson um, I gave you the classification in which market structures are distinguished so today I'm going in detail with one of the four and so now I'm answering you uh, is um, what are the number of firms what is the nature of product uh, can is collusion possible and so on so let's have a look okay a perfectly competitive market is the market structure that has many buyers and sellers let's put it that way and maybe uh, to define it also I can say it's a market structure with many buyers and seller, sellers selling um, a, a homogeneous product I think if I mention that in the definition anyone can tell I'm talking about a perfectly competitive market now the number of firms let's have a look there are so many firms in a perfectly competitive market so here I can maybe start giving you examples uh, how many farmers are in South Africa so they are in a perfectly competitive market you see that there are so many farmers any uh, okay not any because in some cases there can be many firms but it's not a perfectly competitive market so for you to be able to tell uh, which one is which uh, you will have to look at other criteria okay uh, for instance if I say to you uh, there are let's say there are four people and amongst those four people we have three girls and one boy if I say to you he stole my pencil uh, amongst the four which one stole the pencil obviously you can see it's the boy and why am I saying that because I said he and so you used gender as a criteria to get the answer now in some cases what if I say she stole my pencil do you see that that single uh, criteria of gender does not tell you who it probably just tells you who did it so any of the three could have stolen the pencil so in this case you will have to go deeper and describe the person that stole the pencil then maybe you say the person was wearing a jacket and if only one person there is wearing a jacket then you say oh so it's that one okay the reason I'm saying this is in an exam they can give you a graph they can give you an extract ask you to read and then ask you uh, can you identify the market structure in the above scenario now don't just use one criteria and say oh there are many firms in there so it's perfect because it could be something else because perfect is not the only market structure with many buyers and sellers there is another market structure that we'll talk about in the next topic uh, which has many buyers and sellers so you see that don't jump into responding go deeper and try to see if uh, there is other criteria in the extract that give you clue as to which market structure they're talking about all right the next one is uh, the nature of product right i started with uh, farming and let me give an apple as an example uh, i'll say apple is a homogeneous product and or we can say it's a standardized product yes we have green ones yes we have uh, different colors some look yellowish and so on but the green ones they are all homogeneous and yes some are bigger some are smaller and so on but if I bring you nine apples from each province here in South Africa and ask you to take a bite can you tell me this one Limpopo this one KZN this one uh, Gauteng this one Eastern Cape obviously you cannot tell why because they are homogeneous but if we look at some other product you can take a bite uh, or a sip and you for those who drink alcohol you can sip and tell this is whatever those of you who drink juice you can tell this is that brand or whatever take a bite on chicken you can tell this is Nando's this is KFC why because those products are not homogeneous they are heterogeneous remember what we said in the previous lesson right the next one is uh, freedom of entry here we are saying uh, can a firm enter uh, or how easy is a firm is it for a firm to enter into this market structure now in this case in a perfectly competitive market entry is absolutely free 
and easy. So in other words, if you want to start selling apples, you can do it anytime. And uh, you, you, when you want to exit the market, you can just eat your apples and go home. You've exited the market. Right, the next one I mentioned um, collusion in the previous... Um, okay, there's a bit of noise from outside. Okay, right, the next one I mentioned collusion earlier. I said collusion can either be possible or impossible. Now, if farmers, think about farmers, how can they collude? They are way too many. Uh, someone will start a WhatsApp group, start adding farmers. As you are busy adding them, Masangu left. And now, Masangu has left the group and we still want to collude. So you will see that collusion in this market structure is very difficult. And you can't even get you know, in contact with all farmers because look, you want to collude and you want to change the price. Like, it's difficult for firms to collude. Even if they were to, they are not allowed to do so, okay? So, so what then determines the price? Demand and supply. Okay, the next one is information. Uh, if we look at a perfectly competitive market, information is complete. I say information can either be complete or incomplete. Okay, uh, we know, uh, you, we all know how to make, uh, let's say, maize. You just take the seed, put it in the ground, wait for, and you do it in the right season. And then it germinates, it grows, we harvest, we die. That's how we make maize. And um, we are all making the same maize. We are planting it from the same seed. So farmer A and farmer B will have the same type of maize because they're using the same seed. Okay. The next one is control over price. No firm can control price. They are all price takers. Remember I mentioned in the previous lesson that a firm can either be a price maker or a price taker. So, if you want to sell maize, if you want to sell apples, you cannot sell at your own price. You have to be a price taker. right? And what if apples are selling at two rand? Then you try to sell yours at three rand. People won't buy from you because they're perfect information. If I go back, information is complete. So you have no control over price because firms have perfect information. They know that they can get the same apples from the previous uh, 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 business. The next one is demand curve. And uh, you'll see when we start explaining the graphs in future lessons, uh, we'll go in detail, but for now, just know that the demand curve is horizontal. So the demand curve is just horizontal, or in other words, we can say it's perfectly elastic. And we did elasticity of demand, elasticity of supply in grade 11, so I'm not going to go into detail at the moment. Okay, in the long run, a perfectly competitive market, remember I said, can a firm can either make economic profit or normal profit so a perfect market can a business in a perfect market cannot make economic profit in the long run they can only make normal profit and the reason is um, entry is free so because of that when uh, new firms enter supply shifts and that causes price to drop to the point that firms only make normal profit okay and, and then those that then start making economic loss, they now decide should they continue or exit the market. And again, we are going to explain in future lessons uh, the rule of shutting down. And you see, we'll be talking about something else there, average variable cost. The next one is decision making. Uh, decision making in this case can, uh, is, is, uh, cannot, decision making by a perfect competitor does not have influence on other firms. Okay, then uh, a firm in a perfect market can achieve productive efficiency and a firm can also achieve allocative efficiency. And here we have examples. I've been mentioning farmers for maize, tomatoes, all that stuff. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this lesson number 60. And again, I'll give you an activity um, which says with reference to the number of buyers and sellers in perfectly competitive markets. Explain whether market power exists. So here this question just wants you to say, does a firm have market power? 
is the JSC an example of a perfectly competitive market and motivate your answer. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.